most coffees that aren't uh, flavoured with, with other ingredients, you've got coffee, milk and water as your three keys. Um, so once you've got a really balanced, uh, mineralised water, um, a great coffee blend for whatever flavour you're trying to achieve, um, and a quality milk for the dryness or wetness of foam you're trying to achieve and the longevity of foam that you want, um, you're pretty much onto a, a winner. It's just whether you can replicate that um, with your staff consistently over time uh, that's going to make or break your quality. In most of the drinks that are sold in the UK, milk is the actual main ingredient in the cup. So um, lattes, cappuccinos, flat whites are all more milk than they are coffee and water. Um, so the importance of milk is it can't really be underestimated. Um, you need a good quality supply chain for your milk. Evaluating the milk supply chain um, and its performance with coffee and its ability to add sweetness, complement sweetness or change flavour um, playing around with those things can really give you an edge over the competition. The fat protects, um, protects milk foam, so it stops it draining, splitting into milk, uh, liquid milk and actual foam um, due to gravity. Protein content, immensely important. Without protein, we can't bind uh, to air and wrap around air to create foam. Um, so protein is that starting point that allows you to create foam for espresso drinks, for example, that are textured. Um, and fat's what protects that foam over time. So the more fat content you've got in there, uh, the glossier and shinier your milk tends to stay for a long, for a long period of time. There's a lot of customers asking for milk alternatives and whether it's vegetarianism, uh, veganism, or simply lactose intolerance, there's a, there's a huge demand for those kind of milks. Um, lactose free would be a really interesting side of things because it doesn't seem to damage um, quality of foam and longevity of foam. Um, and it can achieve you know, similar levels of sweetness to your regular milks. So that would be an interesting area of the market to see that grow. I'm Ian Pye, I am the owner of Old Holly Farm and the farmer here. Um, we're an organic dairy farm, we've got about 110 milking cows. My name's Paul Meeklejenny, I've been working directly in coffee now for about 19 years. We roast um, high-end Arabica coffees. We're here today, I've brought Paul on from Coffee Community, uh, part of UK Coffee Week uh, that are working in conjunction with Arla and we're just showing Paul about where one of his ingredients comes from, which is milk. And I'm quite proud of producing quality milk, but obviously it takes a bit more effort than just cow grass milk. That's it. There's quite a lot of fine tuning that goes into that. So I'm hoping I can show Paul and then Paul might be able to show me a decent cup of coffee later on, which I'm sure he will be able to. Oh, you're wondering why I'm taking you out into a field, but um, there's an all our own a dairy farmer. To get the best milk, we've got to grow the best grass, the best ingredients, which is something you probably know yourself. Um, so the reason I'm taking you out here is that we're planning the grass growth for the year ahead now in winter. <laughs> Managing grass now uh, gives us better ingredients later on down the line. It's been great for Ian to, to show us around it and it really shows how you know on a day like today it, it's not the easiest job in the world uh, and it's very interesting to sort of see right from the managing of the, of the grass side you know obviously it's so much about the cow's diet right down to um, knowing what each individual cow is eating where each individual cow has been walking and that tailoring of, of that whole cow's life that then goes into to making the great milk. I mean, when you get into the, the science of how things foam, things like the, the protein levels, fat levels, and things like that are, are really important. So I was really interested in talking to Ian about how that diet's managed and how he's you know, really detailed uh, in his awareness of, of, of what's happening with the proteins, what's happening with the, the fat levels, and, and the quality of the milk he's, he's producing. With being an organic farmer, you have to be very much in tune with the environment. So in summertime the cows go out, in wintertime and it's snowing like today, the cows come in. Today I think we'll try and keep warm with a nice cup of coffee because it is cold. 